Okay, hello and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox video. This video is about the um, Defender and Discovery 1 calipers. However, this uh, one, this piston and rubber you can see here is off the D2 caliper. And uh, I did film all weekend doing calipers and overhauling them. And I found this one to be a... Uh, a little bit of a bitch actually. Uh, it took a little bit of a while to work out how to get the rubber into place before pushing the piston through it. Because it has a recess to fit the rubber into, that needs to be in place first. And the aperture is quite small, so you cannot get the piston through it when it's been fitted. Anyway, I'm not going to go on about that today. I did actually do um, three calipers, and they're not that bad to do. Um, but this one, of course, this was awkward and the piston is sea solid. I don't have a bench and the tools to do it. If it was this one, I could have knocked it straight through through the union hole. However, I can't. So uh, we'll get back to this. this was, I wanted to do this one first, but never mind. Um, we'll carry on later on with it. HGV calipers are uh, fairly simple to overhaul if you know what you're doing. And both type of calipers, Land Rover or HGV, are not without their challenges. Right, so with the D1 and the Defender calipers, these are an old design, four putt design. Basically, they are actually quite easy to do. Uh, the biggest problem, of course, is the wiper seal retainer, uh, which can get damaged. But uh, basically, there's a few ways of doing this, and... Um, Land Rover will say one way in the manual, other people will say another way, and I have a different way of doing it as well. Right, so I'll just bring this back into view for you. If you see that there, that's a set of stainless steel pistons and all the seals changed on a clean caliper body, so that's uh, ready to go. So that's it, finished. No, actually, I'm joking. Right, so all the workshop manuals say the same thing. Um, there's the Discovery, uh, the older 90s, 110s, Defenders, and even the Puma. All the illustrations and the uh, the method of or the method methodology that they prescribe uh, is all the same. And I don't come from the same school. I come from the uh, LDV school, or, or originally Freight Rover. And we do it slightly different. I'll explain that in a minute. But basically, you have a tool, you hold two pistons, and then you uh, knock two pistons out, uh, change the seals and everything, and then go on to the other side and, and do that. Which, yeah, okay. Um, we do not have LRT 75 or 7500, should I say, which is the uh, bona fide tool. And you can see it clearly here. This is a, the seal retainer. It will push it back in and it also clamps the, the pistons in place, which, okay, we can get around that. We're Land Rover owners, aren't we? At the top of the text there, it says, do not separate caliper halves. Now, also in my old workshop manuals, which uh, LDV, same as a Land Rover almost, it says, highlighted here, caution, do not attempt to separate caliper bodies. Also, uh, Lockheed um, caliper or brake parts manuals also state, we do not recommend that two halves of the caliper be separated unless really necessary. However, you can get seals. I explained it in the last video. Right, so my old stable used to be Freight Rover and LD. V. Um, you can actually still get LDV bits for um, old calipers. I've got that for a job and you can get seal kits which have the seals and uh, the wiper seals and retainers. That's for one caliper. Okay, now I've got four of those because I've got a hell of a lot of work to do. I want to get a few calipers knocked up. AEU 1547G from Paddocks. Okay, they're bona fide. This is uh, with the pistons kit that I got from Britpart. Okay, these are the same things. Um, okay, you have your wiper seals and, of course, your hydraulic fluid seals. Now, you see the coloured markings on there. They are the same as what comes in this box. Okay, so uh, Britpart, no Britpart, bear mark or whatever, um, generally you'll get the same seals. They all come out of the same factory anyway. Well, it's probably in China now, but that used to be a uh, AP Lockheed in uh, um, Warwickshire. Okay, so the hydraulic seal sits in a recess in the caliper body, and I'll draw that. And I'm just going to draw the seal in there. And it's got a slope on the bottom, okay? It's not square at the bottom, it's, it's sloped. And this is for a purpose. 
and uh, the reason for this is you get an edge on the back of the seal and it also helps move the um, piston back. Um, you can see brake applied there in A and uh, brake at rest on B illustration and this basically pulls the piston back enough when the hydraulic pressure is released. That's the reason for it and you get a damn good hydraulic seal between the piston and the seal. Okay. Right, so using heat on a caliper, I'm uh, very cautious about this. A, because the seals are uh, very dangerous if they get burnt, but also brake fluid is flammable, and you'll probably see this spitting out like this now from the union which I'm heating up to get out. So you can see I'm uh, getting it to fire away from myself, give it enough heat to get that flipping steel um, to move because these unions are seized in solid and I did this for the full set of calipers first um, as I said making sure that um, I'm staying a certain distance away from the uh, caliper itself anyway all the rest came out except for this one which uh, was an odd size it wasn't uh, 10 mil or 11 mil or anything imperial it was just rang off so used a pair of mole grips and uh, yeah removed this so this is the first thing to do is to uh, to get access to the fluid ways um, if you're taking a caliper off the vehicle obviously um, it may be a bit different for you what I'd like to say is that a serviceable caliper, all the pistons will move. And hopefully your vehicle will be like that. Um, a little bit of air pressure. You can see I've not got any rags in there to seal it properly, but that's uh, push those pistons out and they move backwards. Now I've got a set of decent brake pads in there so the pistons didn't pop out. And... Uh, yeah, I'll move this back. It's a little bit awkward because of the camera's sort of like making it uncomfortable. But what I'm looking for, first of all, is uh, for the pistons to move. And then I can assess the job from there. All right, so you can see all the pistons have moved so I can remove them quite easily. Now, um, Land Rovers say to clamp off two of the inboard pistons and then work on the other side by pushing them out gently by air and using a bit of wood to tease them till you can get them out so far. My schooling said to use or build up a block, and this is clearly stated in the workshop manual, the, the uh, dimensions, put a bit of block in there, so basically you're holding three pistons in place and then popping one out. It says here, four piston caliper, retain, retain three of the pistons by inserting hardwood block, made to the dimensions, apply air pressure and eject the piston. And it does tell you to mind your fingers. Okay, well I don't have a wooden block here, so I've used a G-cramp uh, brake pad, and you can see I've got uh, a, uh, a certain clamp. Well, that's actually an all foot or wrench, but it works quite well. Um, basically, I just want to get the G-cramp so it's not going to <laughs> obstruct the piston that I'm trying to remove. Okay, and then I'll just pop that out, making sure my fingers are not in the way. If you're just servicing a caliber, you can do it one by one by one until you've done all four. And that's acceptable, okay? That's if you've got a fairly decent and clean caliper. Like I said, uh, we're not splitting calipers here. Well, I've got access to the uh, seals and the wipers. This piston here is uh, rotten. The uh, coating's come off it, so uh, that's no good. The workshop manual, it does say you should be able to remove um, the other pistons by hand, but it, it doesn't seem to work out that way. They do get a bit, little bit stiff in there. So this technique is if you are going to replace the pistons, okay? Because if you have good pistons, you don't need to replace them unless you're putting stainless in for an upgrade. Um, but what this is, is to get out pistons that are semi-seized, okay? Now what I've done is stagger the pistons and uh, then I'm using mole grips and working them backwards and forwards and this works okay and that will remove the piston like so because you've staggered the pistons it gives the mole grips uh, enough purchase to be able to get on them but the problem is with these it actually does damage the edges of them, of them. and I'll show you here this uh, piston is now unserviceable I've done this as a demonstration it's a pity because um, otherwise I'd have used them in something else however never mind just chuck them in the uh, rubbish bin and away we go yeah, so um, I always find for some reason that depending on the angle you get with the mole grip, it will uh, you have to adjust it to get the right grip on. Okay, um, turning and uh, levering at the same time. 
and they come out. You see, just like that, all right, the harder they are stuck in there, the worse they can be. And it's usually a dry seal that will stop it from moving. Use brake fluid as a lubricant. Don't use WD-40 because WD-40 is a mineral oil and it doesn't mix well with brake fluid. So I got so far and I accidentally pushed that piston back in. Yeah, not good. Okay, so what I've gone ahead and done here is just put the pistons back in, blown it out, and then start it again. Yeah, so basically what you see that I'm doing now is pushing the pistons back into place. Now this will give you a, a good clue to how you fit the seals before you fit your new pistons. And it's as easy as that. Right, so uh, pistons should actually slide backwards and forwards. If you've got a caliper that's completely seized, the chances are that the caliper's caliper is going to be unserviceable. But you have to strip it to have a look. Okay, so I'll sort all that out and then get the other piston out. Okay, here's a uh, gruesome set of uh, O-ring picks, which, to be honest with you, the Egyptians could have used for uh, mummifying people, pulling brains out of noses and things like that. However, these are um, just common old garden uh, O-ring removers. These ones are non-damaging O-ring removers and replacers, as you can see, they have um, spoon cut ends and they're very smooth so therefore not damaging any surrounding area either. You can get away with a blunt screwdriver like this. This is the uh, smallest one you usually get in a pack. Had this one quite a while and to be honest with you they are not just screwdrivers are they? Um, got another set of plastic snap-on o-ring removers as well. I haven't actually used these. These are made of plastic, and this is actually the cheapest thing you can buy from Snap-on. Um, however, they uh, help remove and replace O-rings. We won't be using that. We'll just be uh, using a one and a screwdriver. Pistons are out, and, uh, yeah, we'll chuck those away. Right, so one way of uh, getting these... Uh, wiper seals and retainers out without damaging them is pushing uh, where the wiper seal is and then flipping it out right that comes out and the next one you see i've actually got these i've learned uh, through the years to keep the old ones just in case you damage one and i'll show you uh, what can happen later okay so i have a, um, a spoon type of uh, seal remover these are really easy to use it's just a matter of uh, digging into the seal twisting it until it comes out as such okay no big deal you use a screwdriver the same way just don't scratch the bore when you're trying to remove the seal i'll give you a, a little demo here okay I just push it underneath flip it up and it comes out like so so that's all the seals removed what we have is the caliper body and that's all of it in uh, one piece not in two pieces next thing to do is to check out how um what sort of condition the bores are in if there's any damage or how much corrosion is actually in there now this caliper is pretty good actually all round um, there's no corrosion at all so um, this is serviceable there's no scratches on the inside or pitting anywhere seals now are unserviceable I would keep the uh, seal retainers if uh, if they're in good condition just in case okay um, but basically this is all scrap now it's a pity, really. Anyway, um, the grooves here you can clean out with a small screwdriver. Basically, you want to make sure there's no um, grot in there that would lift a seal out. That's the um, part where the wiper seal goes. You can run around there and um, scrub it out. Okay, so if you have bores that are slightly corroded, and these D2 ones were, they um, weren't actually in the best of conditions, you can use uh, Scotch-Brite. And there's aerosol brake cleaner here. Do not use anything else but brake cleaner because it can uh, cause problems. Now, what I'm looking for here, once I've moved the, removed the grot off the uh, uh, cylinder bore, is to have a look and see. Now, um, Scotch-Brite doesn't remove any metal, but it does take dirt off, and this is uh, fantastic stuff. It doesn't matter if the bores are a little bit scuffed with this, um, because it doesn't actually make contact with the pistons but you do not want scratches in it now i'm using this screwdriver here and as a demonstration it's uh, running in here if you've got uh, parts of old seal that have been stuck in there you want to have that removed the same again any corrosion at all needs to be removed 
on the where the wiper seal is, corrosion's okay, but on the inner seal or the hydraulic seal, you do not want corrosion in there, otherwise it will not seal properly. Okay, so you basically get the idea there because whatever caliper it is, it, you still have to treat it near enough the same way. So when you're happy with it, make sure you check all the way around in the bores to make sure that um, there's no uh, swarf left in there or any bits of rust or dirt or whatever. Cleanliness in uh, this operation is next to godliness, or should I say, for good service. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to clean this caliper up, um, blow it out with air, use brake cleaner until it's uh, completely and utterly spotlessly clean. One thing I didn't show you here, which I should have done, is that you need to also blow out all the fluid passageways, which is uh, from the uh, brake pipes and where the bleed nipple is as well. The proprietary stuff that I'm using actually comes from uh, my workplace. Uh, TRP is just a consumable supplier. Um, brake cleaner, brake clutch fluid and uh, rubber grease. Okay. Um, clean gloves and a pair of budgie smugglers, which have uh, been... Uh, have gone past their best keeping everything utterly clean any containers that you're putting brake fluid into and the surrounding area okay just remember that also brake cleaner is also a paint stripper so if you have paint on your bench it will actually soften it up and you'll get it on your uh, materials now this Renolit rubber grease is what you use to assemble brake parts with. It's compatible with brake fluid. Uh, two schools of thought, you can either put the seals in brake fluid or um, use rubber grease. The kit we have supplied by Paddox is a brick part, which uh, the part number is DA1165. You get eight uh, stainless steel pistons and then you get the seals with it and a tube of red rubber grease. So this is how they're recommending that you assemble it with. Always look after your seals, keep them in the bag until you're ready to use them. Treat them like uh, engine piston rings, okay? Because um, you'd have to buy another set if you damaged any of these. Fitting the seals is not rocket science. I prefer to not use gloves because it's a better feel with uh, just your fingers. Now, um, the rubber gl grease on here is you just put a little bit on it, smear it on there, and then put it in to the recess. Now, just remember not to twist these seals as they go in. They want to go in fairly square so they sit nice. Okay, so it's, it's not hard to do. Well, it is hard to do because you can see it's a bit fiddly. But once it's in, you've, your rubber grease is okay. That will lubricate the piston as it goes in. Right, so I bought a tool from eBay oh, a couple of years ago now. Now this is to uh, push in um, the uh, seals. Now they f this one fits into the piston like so. You have your wiper seal. Um, it's actually not the best way that it's been positioned, but the idea is to push the wiper seal and retain it in in one go with the piston, which um, with the stainless ones it doesn't actually fit, so that's uh, blown that out of the water. However, this tool is uh, quite useful anyway. The piston spreader is huge and I can use it for um, different vehicles. However, the uh, bosses, well, you can use them for anything. Um, the concept behind that is it's not a bad idea. However, right, with the wiper seals, you need to put them with the retainer and then you fit them to the caliper, okay? So that's fit into the retainer with just a tiny bit of rubber grease. You don't need to slur it yet. And basically, you um, put this in place and then press it down. And this is where the fun actually begins. If you do not push it fully and squarely, it will buckle and it won't fit in. And we've all been there. I'm sure some of you are cringing because I know I have. I've done this on purpose so you can see. This is uh, now US. You can't use the retainer again. So you could get away with using uh, the one of the old retainers or you need a, uh, an extra kit. So what I did actually uh, use a pad spreader with a uh, boss. So add even pressure all the way across the face of the retainer and then just pushed it home. You can feel when things go right and that's exactly what happens. So yeah, that's nice and square. So um, yeah, 
the seals, okay, they're in place, and the next thing to do is to fit pistons. I've done them one at a time, it's just my preference. You could do all four um, seals, or all four sets of seals, should I say. Uh, rubber grease up the pistons, and then push them into place. And the whole idea, basically, is to get them square in the hole, and then they should just slip into place. If they're too hard to go in, there's uh, a problem. But you can see that I've just pushed it into place without any trouble, and that's the way it should be. So basically, uh, when I, uh, okay, I'm just having a look at it first, and I'll just drop it into the camera view. And here we go, they're done, all right. Red rubber grease is not a problem, but the pistons are in, and that should be in good working order. With a little bit more light on it, you can see there, um, the caliper's okay. I've actually put a new uh, bleed nipple in it, and uh, we're ready to use this.